What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 Today we're going to be doing the match preview for Atletico Madrid versus Barcelona in La Liga. It is yet another big, big game for Barcelona as we now kind of reach the final few months crunch time of the season. And it's a big moment, especially in the league title race. This match will pretty much define whether or not Barcelona have any chance of having a title race coming up to, of course, the Clasico next month, or that whether El Clasico will just be a one-off game to try to get one over your rivals, or would there be some, you know, meeting behind that game? Because this match here that we're playing here against the other side of Madrid is going to have some big implications on that. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 9 p.m. local time. So your regular kickoff time in La Liga. And this match will be taking place at the Metropolitano Stadium, which of course is the home of of Atletico Madrid where the record there this season has been absolutely insane they've won every single game I think maybe one draw I think they have one loss in the cup against Athletic Club and that was it everything else especially in La Liga absolutely 100% undefeated and the referee for this match has also been confirmed it's one of the big ones on the pitch it will be Jose Maria Sanchez Martinez and on the VR it will be Mario Lopez Let's start off by taking a look at the league table where Barcelona are currently sat in third place in La Liga on 61 points. After playing 28 matches, we do have 18 wins, 7 draws, and 3 losses. You look at our last 5 games in the league, 3 wins and 2 draws, which is the same form as the top of the table leaders in Real Madrid, who are sat on 69 points, 8 points ahead of Barcelona. After playing 28 games, they have 21 wins, 6 draws, and 1 loss. So we're 8 points off the top. We're, of course, 1 point off 2nd place Girona, who are on 62 points. And then, of course, we do have a 6-point gap against our current rivals for this match, Atletico Madrid. Again, with the 8-point gap, it's going to be... One where you kind of just have to win all your games up until the Clasico and just see whether or not Real Madrid uh, drop points or not. Might as well talk about them now. If you look at the top team, they're told to be facing this weekend. Two away trips. Real Madrid will be traveling to El Sadar and facing Osasuna. And Girona will be traveling to Getafe and playing them away from home. Two difficult games. I would honestly think that one of them would drop points in some sort of capacity. I think one of these will end up in a draw, whether it's going to be the Madrid Osasuna game or Girona and Getafe. Again, the opponent is fairly decent both away from home as well. I can see someone here definitely slipping up and of course both these matches will be taking place today and we will know the results of these two matches going into this game. With that now being said, again, Barcelona Minimum is to get second place in La Liga. That way we can have the uh, Super Cup uh, qualification for next season. If we can salvage some of a tell charge, fair enough. But I think, like I've mentioned a lot on the channel, I'll say it again. You have to go to that Classico, I would say at least, like, maximum six points behind Real Madrid. You got to make it a three-point game. You win the Classico, and then three points behind Real Madrid. Then there's a real, you know, real uh, remontada, so to speak. But with it being eight points, I think that's just a bit too much. And you have, then you can only narrow it down to five points. And Madrid is going to be lose and draw or lose and lose. And it's that's where things get, you know, truly out of hand. I think Real Madrid's schedule from now to the end of the season in La Liga is quite decent in the sense that it's definitely, you know, Achievable for them to go on and win every game and not really slip up too too much apart of course from Barcelona uh, Next month in the Clasico, but again for Barcelona just comes down to keeping a consistent streak But again, this game is gonna be difficult and again uh, Athletic Madrid I think they're only two points three points behind fifth place athletic clubs so They kind of want to cushion in that top four of course So a lot of implications for a lot of sides in this uh, in this uh, match day and it could have some big big You know effects on how the top four does look in La Liga. Let's now take a look at our opponents in Atletico Madrid. Of course, Atletico Madrid, one of the best sides in the world, I think, on on paper, when their squad is absolutely stacked. I would say definitely top three squads in the world, just based on personnel and numbers they do have in their side. And they are, you know, in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. So they're one of the best eight teams uh, left in Europe, but that's no mean feat. Now, the last time we did face them this season was at the Monjuic earlier uh, in the season. I think it was near the end 
of the year. I think it was beginning of December, if I'm not mistaken. We beat them 1-0. It was a Joao Fix goal very, very early on in the first half. And after that, we kind of just rode the storm a little bit. Had a defensive masterclass, and Akipendi made a worldly of a save against Memphis Pies free kick. And we end up winning 1-0. If you look at this lineup at the time, you're thinking, bloody hell. I wish we could have this lineup today. Of course, we had no Frankie de Jong. We have no Pedri. Everyone else is uh, available. I think Aruho did play at right back in this game as well, which was a surprise. This was kind of Indigo Martinez's uh, big moment of the season when he was playing that one, two months. Where he was just absolutely unbelievable. And then he got injured. And we had, of course, the emergence of Pau Kubarsi. But we could see very much a similar team to this one, uh, apart, of course, from Inaki Pena in goal but let's take a look at Atletico Madrid's last six matches in all competition in their last match they beat Inter Milan 2-1 and avoided penalties into extra time 3-2 on penalties to qualify of course for the quarterfinals of the Champions League they lost 2-0 to Cadiz they beat Betis 2-1 they lost to Athletic Club 3-0 in the semi-final of the Copa del Rey eventually of course they knocked out they drew 2-2 with El Maria one of the worst sides I've ever seen in La Liga. And they did, of course, lose their first leg against Inter uh, Milan in the Champions League round 16-1-0. But let's take a look at their last three games in all competition. Firstly, is that narrow 2-1 win against Real Betis? I think they did go 2-0 up into the break. I think Morata scored and someone else who I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, William Carvalho for Betis scored an absolute worldly to bring it back to 2-1. I think there was about half an hour left of the game and again Atletico Madrid kind of just rode the storm of course their system and their formation is on the right hand side there their typical 5-3-2 which they've been very consistent with throughout this whole entire season even the whole entire tenure you could say of Diego Simeone kind of started off in a 4-4-2 is kind of now shifted into a 5-3-2 but this game was fairly close um I think it was more so that that Atletico Madrid kind of just wanted to hold on to the lead again once the 2-1 scoreline was in the effect after that with half an hour to go Atletico Madrid did have a few chances but they just couldn't really you know um uh, put them away into the back of the net but I think very much a standard win for them at the Metropolitano now the next game up 2-0 loss against Cadez now Atletico Madrid's away form this season has been nothing short of abysmal absolutely abysmal Cadez have not won a game since September and they go and they turn over Atletico Madrid again if we're if Atletico are coming to the Montjuic, this whole entire game is going to be different. But we're going to the Metropolitan, it does make it a bit different. Uh, again, their formation on the right hand side as well with the personnel, uh, no Griezmann in this game. Uh, they had no uh, Molina as well. They're a natural wing back that would have saw, of course, Marcus Lorente uh, being in the midfield. But again, they just feel under the pressure of not having the whole entire stadium in your favor i think uh it was uh juanmi who got the early goal for cadet i think before the 15th minute somewhere around there and again they kind of put athletico madrid uh, under the cosh i remember remember Sapai missing uh, a good chance as well and then they got their second goal and it's just it wasn't capitulation but they just had an absolutely terrible day at the office and they end up losing 2-0 and again they kind of recreated that gap of six points between us and athletico madrid right now in the league table and that's of course that last match in the league with the last match in all competition was a 2-1 win on paper against inter of course going to the penalties and winning 3-2 they did play on wednesday so we do have an extra you could say 24 hours rest but we have to travel of course to madrid they're going to stay in madrid they did end up playing of course 120 minutes in this game for a lot of their players again the formation and the personnel is on the screen right there it was a a game that Inter Milan could have won, but didn't. And a game where, yeah, again, Barcelona kind of helping out. I thought it could have giving them Memphis a pie for like $2 million, uh, Not last January, but the January before that. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, but... Bloody hell, I think Atletico Madrid had a really, really good game. I think also Inter Milan had a fairly decent game in, of course, the 90 minutes. I think extra time, that extra time, half an hour, which is absolutely uh, wasteful. Of course, Raquel May could have scored in the dying moments to absolutely send the um, stadium erupting and then them qualifying in 90 minutes. I would say over the course of the 90 minutes, it was a fairly even contest. Inter Milan missed a lot of chances. Atletico, I think, had a handful of chances and ended up scoring half of them. I think apart from the two goals, we knew we they had a big miss in the uh, first first half and of course the Raquel may uh, chance near the end as well but Inter Milan of course they had the Lautaro Martinez chance the Marcus Turam chance the Barella chance so they were getting quite opened up a little bit I wouldn't say it was pure domination from Atletico side but once it was going into extra time and penalties you knew that they were gonna you know end up qualifying but again wasn't easy for them they made hard work of it against a team that I would say play somewhat 
of a similar style, similar formation. But of course, I think I think I think Inter Milan are a bit more on the attacking side of their formation, with Atletico Madrid a bit more on the defensive side. But overall, though, they got the result, they qualified, and that's all you could really ask for. Now on the screen right now is not that I believe that Diego Simeone will select for this match. I think he'll keep it fairly straightforward and fairly similar to the match they played, of course, against Inter Milan in the Champions League. I think it will be Jan All Black in goal, a back three of Savage, Witzel, and Gabriel Paulista because Mario Hermoso is injured and he will be out for this game. So again, I think their next best center back and their only next uh, best center back is going to be Paulista and they loaned out Soyuncu in the January transfer window. Full backs being uh, Molina and Lino. They could He could bring in Rignaldo, whether it could be a left center back or left wing back. I think he will keep it fairly straightforward. Midfield three, I think, of course, of Koke, Lorente, and DePaul. I doubt he'll start Saul unless one of them have uh, some discomfort. I think the only thing that changes this lineup will be discomfort. Of course, the front two being Morata and Griezmann. I don't think Correa and Depay will crack that front two. Only thing, only positions where I see changes could be in defense. I think that midfield three, front two, pretty much set in stone. Again, Rinaldo could be coming in at left center back for Gabriel Paulista. We could see Gabriel Paulista come in. Uh, maybe Lino could be changed on the left. I think Molina on the right is pretty, uh, you know, standard along with Savage and Bissell. Just that left hand side where I think things could change. I'd watch out for maybe Marcos Llorente being deployed as a wing back and then maybe Saul coming into the midfield. Maybe he could put Correa in the midfield and have kind of a mid double pivot in a front three. We've seen him do that. That a little bit as well but I think overall though nine of these players are pretty much set in stone in terms of the system and you know style of play it will look fairly fairly similar to what you see on the screen so overall final thoughts on Atletico Madrid of course they're one of the best teams in the world they're a very good side and they're very well managed by the manager Diego Simeone whose record against Barcelona is very much up and down I would say away from home at the Camp Nou it's basically non-existent at the Metropolitano there's a few wins here and there but I would say more so definitely on the draw and loss side favoring of course uh, Barcelona he tends to do well against Barcelona in the cup competitions although we did get the better of Atletico Madrid I think in the cup competition has been a bit even but in the league has always been overall Barcelona dominance and I hope that does continue in this game again players to look out for Honestly, the only player that I'm scared of is Antoine Griezmann. Let's let's be honest here. I think DePaul is a cracking player in the midfield along with Laurent Laurenti as well. Those are two players that I rate very highly. Apart from that, no one really, you know, scares me, so to speak. I think their full back, uh, their wing backs are very strong as well. The fence is definitely get at, of course, on paper. I don't think Witzel is that great. Savage as well. Hermoso, of course, he's all right this season, but he is uh, out for this game with an injury. Jan Oblak, I think he hasn't been, you know, the Jan Oblak that we remember back in 2017, 2018, when he was, you know, being touted as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Still a good goalkeeper, but I think, you know, he's definitely got at. This team is very much a team that's kind of running on its last legs, and... It's a game where I think everything is up in the air. Of course, Barcelona have the undefeated uh, away record this season. Uh, Third Madrid have the undefeated home record uh, this season. Uh, both teams have, you know, kind of the story arc of, you know, a former player facing their former player with Joel Felix, Memphis Depay. I think it's going to come down to moments in this game and more specifically tactical changes by the two managers. I don't know if Cho Simeone will make any big changes from the inter game. We could see maybe Memphis Depay start the game. We could see maybe Saul uh, in the midfield with Lorente as one of the wing bats. I think only a tactical change can really have a big flip on this matchup. But I think for Barcelona, their point of view to be Atletico Madrid against very simple if we see what we expect, which is them going to be sitting back a little bit, hitting us on the counter-attack and kind of giving us the ball. We're going to be very, very cautious in our decision-making. I think decision-making for Barcelona on the ball is going to be super, super important. And of course, when you get to the final third, you have to make it count. Now, as the season winds down, of course, yellow card suspension is something very important to look out for. We do have, of course, the Classico in just over a month's time. And we do have right now five players who are one yellow card away from suspension. Those five players are Robert Lewandowski, Ori Romeu, João Cancelo, Inigo Martinez, and Andreas Christensen. If they get a yellow card in this game, they will not be available until the first leg against PSG in April because after this game, of course, we have the international break and then we play Las Palmas home on a Saturday. I think not next Saturday, but the next Saturday after that, I think the last Saturday of March, and they will be suspended for that game, and after that is PSG, so any of them get a yellow card in this game, I would honestly really be pushing to, for the likes of Lewandowski, Joel Cancelo, to be getting yellow cards in this game, get it all over with, that way it's not lingering once we hit, you know, a few games away from the Classico, same with Christensen as well, I think with Inigo and Romero, the kind of squad plays a little bit, so I'm not really too worried about them, but those three, I wouldn't, you know, tell them, make sure you guys get yellow cards in this game, but 
I would say, you know what, final few minutes, if you can get one, get one, why not get that suspension and get even a longer break as well. But again, something like this has to be looked out for and with the classical coming up, and of course, you know, the break having implication, keep your eyes on those yellow card suspensions as there are five players currently for Barcelona at Jeopardy. Time now to get into the press conference reaction of Xavi Hernandez, who spoke to the media this morning. He has asked, of course, about the game against Atletico Madrid, the UCL draw, fitness update, important player update. And again, he was asked, as per usual, about his future as well. Let's get and see what Xavi had to say this morning in the presser. He came out saying tomorrow will be a vital game for the league against an opponent of a Champions League level. They was asked on the PSG draw, saying that it is one of the most difficult opponents, but I'm sure that we will have enough uh, arguments to complete against them. On Joao Felix's impact in this game, he played an amazing game the last time we played Atleti, and I'm sure that he will be just as motivated for the game tomorrow, and he does have the attributes to play a great game tomorrow as well. Back on the PSG game, PSG is saying that it's going to be an easy draw against us. They're probably the favorites because of their huge transfer budget and their economic you know, stance on the world, but the history is on our side as we do have more Champions League trophies in them again keep in mind PSG do have a big whopping zero Champions League trophies one ever then Asal Kobarsi playing both the Euros and the Olympics this summer one of the hot topics around Barcelona and Chavi said there's so much time left until then but of course we don't want to repeat with these young players to what happened with Pedri back in 2021 so the club Kind of learning from their mistakes, which is a good thing. On um, Marcus Alonso and Ferran Torres, they both trained with the group this morning. Chavi the confirms as well, and you'll see. We'll see later on today when the squad list comes out if they will be available or not. But he is, of course, optimistic. Then as on injury update on Frankie De Jong, and he said that Frankie De Jong he'll come back when he's 100% ready, and hopefully he'll be back before the first game against PSG. We are optimistic about that. That'll be a big, big recovery, of course. Uh, he's uh, I talked about some of the youngsters and that players like Fabian Lopez, Paul Gubasi were unknown a year. Ago, but now they're important places in the first team. The team has a lot of talent. Then he was asked on Griezmann about why Griezmann didn't fit at Barcelona. He said that, look, he fit at Barcelona. We sold him due to the economic situation of the club. Griezmann is a player that I liked a lot. And of course, Xavi there is correct. If, if, if I was, when he said this, I was thinking that if COVID didn't happen, we probably still have Messi and Griezmann in our team right now. That's how badly COVID impacted Barcelona. Then asked on his relationship with Deco, saying, look, I talk to Deco almost every single day. We have an excellent relationship. Then asked on Kunde's form. Again, Kunde's played every single minute of 2024. And Xavi said that Kunde is adapting really well as a fullback for me. He's one of the most important players of the team. And I could not agree more. On him adapting as a fullback, listen, I still think the summer comes around. Xavi's gone. Kunde's going to go to the club and say, look, I'm going to play a center back. If you don't want to put me a center back, sell me i think that's going to come down to that point this summer as we saw last summer of course then as on christensen in the pivot experiment saying that christensen has improved a lot playing in the position but we need to be uh, very composed he's one of the reasons why our defensive uh, has improved uh, quite significantly and finally chai was asked on his plans for next season and whether or not he will stay at barcelona he said look my decision is still final i will leave on june the 30th and after that I will rest for a little bit. So I guess Chavez is kind of confirming a sabbatical season. Uh, what he's going to be, you know, have a year off, so to speak, just to recover, and, you know, after all the hype and everything that he's uh, had to endure. But anyways, that concluded Chavez's press conference reaction. Having the match against Atletico Madrid tomorrow. Let's now get into the lineup prediction. We're going to start with the manager, of course, Chavez Hernandez. I'm going to try my best to predict his lineup. I think it's 50-50 with Chavez's lineup. It's either going to be the exact same lineup as uh, Napoli, of course, keeping that high momentum going, or he might make few rests, few maybe you could say tactical switches. I honestly believe that Chavi will pick the exact same lineup that he selected for the Napoli game. The one change I could see is, of course, Joao Felix in for Fermin Lopez. But Fermin Lopez got a goal. His press off the ball was very important. He showed that intensity in the midfield and you know the defensive work rate, which you know Joao Felix does lack heavily. Apart from that, I really cannot see any changes. I think he will stick with Rafinha in the midfield with Lemany Mal on the right, although I do think that is a bit risky. We could maybe see Fermin Lopez drop into the midfield and then Joel Felix goes on the left and Rafinha drops to the bench, potentially, or maybe Lemany Mal drops to the bench. You don't want to you know, play the 16-year-old way too much, and then, of course, Rafinha will go on the right-hand side. I'll tell you this for free. Back five, set in stone 100%. Christian and Gundogan, Lewandowski, set in stone. It's going to come down to those three with Rafinha, Fermin, and Lemany Mal, that kind of circle of three there. I think, of course, 
from these 11 players, we could see maybe one change at the absolute most. I think only Joel Felix has a chance of starting this game outside of these 11 players. Victor Roque, of course not. Sergio Roberto, maybe, but... I I don't know. I don't I think you cannot start Sergio Roberto away at the Metropolitano with only, you know, 20 minutes or 25 minutes against Napoli in the Champions League. You know, he's just come off the injury as well. He didn't play in so many games that he was available in. Definitely will see him off the bench in this game, but starting, I think, is a big, big risk. So, honestly, from the bench players, I, of course, Inigo can't start, but, you know, the, the back five cents stone. But in those attacking positions i only see joel felix as an option but overall this is the thing that chavi hernandez will select for this match and of course in the comments down below let me know what you think chavi will go with now i'm going to show you guys my lineup what i would do if i was a barcelona coach and i have of course made one change to chavi's lineup prediction and that is of course bringing in joel felix on the left hand side for Fermin lopez i would start felix in this game this is the game that felix thrives on those big moments you know we saw this season uh when he first uh, started against Betis and Antwerp big doubts around Felix this defeat Barcelona in those moments Porto at home Atletico Madrid uh against Real Madrid in the Classico he had a very very good game despite not getting a goal these are his moments this is why he's kind of you know had some sort of a reputation this season of you know being somewhat of not a flop of a signing my only question of starting Felix is that I don't think you can have Felix Rafinha Lemanya Mal. I think now looking at this lineup, I'd probably go with Roberto in the midfield to you know kind of balance that because that's way way too attacking and that's gonna put so much work on that left hand side. There's no defensive coverage whatsoever. It's probably gonna be just be Rafinha making those runs to uh, cover the runners of uh, Joel Casello because Joel Casello is of course gonna be attack minded. So looking at this lineup, I probably would put Roberto in the midfield, maybe. Again, with Rafinha and Lemanyam on the right, it's a 50-50. You can start either one of them. But I think if Chavi does go with Felix, we probably could see Roberto start in the midfield. But I think most importantly, the difference between my lineup and Chavi's lineup is that I would go with Felix. And I don't think that Chavi will go with Felix from the start. But that's line that I would select for this match. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know if you'd rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup. Time now for my score prediction. What do I believe the result will be in this match? This match has a draw written all over it i've gone with the 1-1 one, one draw nil nil could also be a very very high possibility and a draw is bad for barcelona that pretty much puts real madrid at the title especially if they beat osasuna away we have to win this game i think atletico madrid from their perspective they're thinking oh we have to win this game to have that top four gap but realistically i think it's more important for barcelona to win this game than atletico madrid i do see a higher chance a little bit of Barcelona winning than Atletico Madrid simply on the fact that we're on the high I think we're the better team as well I think we have Atletico Madrid's number this season I think of course their home form is his home form is the no mean feat but also our away form is no mean feat as well and I think that Xavi since he's been the manager has gone the better side of Simeone quite a bit uh, during his tenure I think you know he beat them he beat them at home for two he went to the Wanda last season beat them one nil um, I forget the home game last season. I think it was a Ferran Torre. I think it was the game where Ferran Torre scored. We beat them 1-0 as well. So I think Xavi's, you know, league record against Simeone is all wins since being the Barcelona manager. But this game, both teams coming off, you know, qualifying for the Champions League. Both teams need to win. If you're a betting man, you bet on a draw 100%. But I'm praying that Barcelona can get a result. I don't think we'll lose this game. I'm fairly, fairly confident we will not lose this game, but a draw, unfortunately, in this game, especially with the league title race, will feel like a loss. But we'll wait and see how things turn out, but my official prediction is a draw for this match. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think the scoreline will be. So that was a match preview for Atletico Madrid versus Barcelona in La Liga. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course, see me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing, firstly, of course, is the score prediction. And secondly, on those lineups, first, you would rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup. What do you think Chavi would go with? What would you go with? you the manager. Leave me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. Set the reminder on the screen and come and join me watching the game with me. Follow after the match by my match review. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Big game ahead. This game will pretty much decide if there's going to be any chance of Barcelona retaining their league title or not. Take care and force the Barca. Barcelona, Barcelona, Barcelona.